Now, I was 15 years old when I spray painted my first model plane with the help of Harold Price, the late Harold Price. And John DeTavio was a big help back then, as well as many other people that uh, have since passed away. But I, over the years, and this has been a lot of years, that was back in the early 60s, early 60s. So imagine now, imagine how old I must be, wow. But I've really enjoyed and had a passion for painting my whole life of motorcycles, guitars, I've painted boat engine covers. My God, I painted guitars for people. I. It just goes on and on, as well as probably over 100 model planes, uh, some of which won awards, and a lot of motorcycles, some of which have won best in show. But in the end, the passion for painting, the big thrust of everything I do, is to try to share that information with my friends on YouTube. Now today, it's looking like our patience has really paid off. Wake up this morning, it's, it's about 20 degrees outside, it's really, really cold. But the big thing I wanted, it'll warm up, it'll be above freezing this afternoon. The big thing I really wanted, and it's a major thing, I wanted bright sunlight. So when I do my paint test, this video is going to be about testing silver paint. I can take it out in a bright sun and candle it and look at it and see it from a lot of angles and make a decision. So when I paint the wheels on the MT-09, I have already done all that testing and I have the paint that I really think is going to accent that blue the best. And it may be... And you never know. It may be that we wind up with a baseline paint, the R1 paint that I have left over, but I'll be able to compare it side by side in the bright sunlight today. So I want to get started. Even though it's freezing cold, I want to get started. I don't know why. I feel like I'm playing in the Green Bay Packers or something up there for football. But a day like today now, just to explain something that I think is important, it's difficult to paint in cold weather. Usually you have to add a little extra thinner, a little extra pressure. But, and I've done that my whole life, so it's not a problem. But the paint is made to be sprayed about 70 degrees. So all the formulas they give you and all how many coats and everything, it's all based on that you're in a controlled condition of 70 degrees. Today we're not controlled. We'll make the adjustments. And a day like today, I call on all my experience. If you've looked at old videos on my channel, there's over 2,400 videos now. There's a lot of them where I'm painting on a day when there's three feet of snow on the ground. And when we did Joe Padula's job, my, my God, there was, there was snowing while we were painting it and <clears throat> way below freezing. You can deal with it. And now another thing, let me get a little forward here. The, another thing that I always questioned, body shops always tell you if you ask people at real, oh, it's got to be 70, you can't paint below this temperature. That I have not found that to be true, but I'm not a professional. So... Maybe I don't need a professional, so, or maybe I've traded something away that I don't even know I've traded away. But I have been able to paint in some really cold weather. I want to go check and see what the temperature is now. Now before I head inside where it's a lot warmer than it is out here, this is something I've noticed right away. Whenever the temperature gets below freezing, all, of lithium, all the bikes have lithium-ion batteries except the MT-09. They really take a long time to top off. I don't know if that's significant or not. And in the summer, when I flip from battery to battery, sometime in two minutes there, solid green. Well, in this temperature today, they've been sitting there for I probably for an hour. I don't know. We're going to do keep a little track of that in the future. Now, several people already commented on the idea of the blue windshield. Well, we're going to have it. <laughs> I got my notice from Amazon today that it's going to be here in two months, which last time that meant two weeks. But I'm looking forward to having that as one of my evil twin parts of the MT-09. I gotta get inside. I am really cold out here. And this is what's gonna be in our favor today. We have bright sun, and that's gonna allow us to really look at the silver in some bright sun and make our decision. So let's go test paint. So here's what we're dealing with today. Rutherford, New Jersey, 24 degrees, at least real feel 24. But I really like it to be above freezing before I paint. So we may have to, uh, <laughs> Have to have extra extra coffee today. This is a day I think we're going to be drinking a lot of extra coffee today. We're going to make a whole pot extra. So after a big cup of coffee it's great to get down in the shop where it's nice and warm. Now yesterday what I did I made up the four samples. This is and we're going to do four segments of the wheel today. Maybe the fifth one. I don't know how it's going to play out based on the temperature. This is the original paint that I'll be able to use as my baseline. I did a test with bronze powder. I did a test 
with the with the paste pigment and I did a little test I want to do a test with this is the paint left over from Pokey's drop that has the big larger flakes this as a question mark I don't even know because this I don't think is going to be appropriate for a wheel but I want to do all four and I'm going to show my little my thought of how to do this and hope it works out and hope I can pass on some good information so my original idea was and I'm not sure it's going to play out exactly the way I want we're going to find out very soon is I wanted to make a separate test on an actual wheel not on a flat light bulb or a something like that and this doesn't matter how we do this and then I wanted to save the other side of the wheel so I could do my test with the urethane paint so if I if this all plays out the way I hope this will be pretty good but but again you never know so the first thing I wanted to do is segment this off into four segments so I have like four test panels then I want the purpose of the blue tape is I want to mark which is which well it wouldn't be wouldn't be real intelligent not to know which is which but as long as we have that baseline we could work from I think this is going to work out to really to our favor so again none of this is really critical but I will I will just do this this is the R1 base here and this is going to be test number one here and this is going to be test number two Again, I've never done this with a wheel. I forgot I had all those wheels up there. I, I thought I had one, and when I did the investigating, <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing to find out I had five. I have five of these wheels up there. Anyway, so this is going to allow me to paint the other, change of paint and a gun, paint here, change of paint and a gun, and at the end of it, be able to go out in the sun and look at the whole thing. Then be able to mix up a batch of clear and clear coat it. And take a look at it then what I want to do as the last thing flip this over and do the other side of the wheel I want to take what's left of the clear coat put some pigment in based on which one of these I like and do a whole side of a wheel test just for my own information then at the end of the day or tomorrow or whenever I'll have Karen look at this I'll be able to look at it in bright sunlight right next to the MT-09 and We'll make our decision for painting the wheels. So the next thing is get the wheel stand out, cover it with tin foil, and get this. It's always a lot easier to deal with a wheel if it's in a, a wheel stand, a wheel balancing stand. And what was donated by Pokey years ago, again, thank you Pokey. So using up just ordinary aluminum foil, I want to cover the wheel stand and just leave the rollers out. And that'll just keep the overspray from getting on there while we're doing our thing with the paint. And Pokey, I have gotten a lot of use. This wheel stand has painted a lot of wheels. Now using a tin foil to cover up uh, the wheel balancing stand is a great idea. I've painted wheels who use it putting a broomstick through them and doing all kind of other little hokey things. Having a wheel balancer, and again and again, thank you Pokey has made this so easy it's so much easier than trying to improvise with broomsticks and uh, pieces of tubing and whatever this once you have the technique down and I've shown it on every video I make it'll make painting a wheel that much easier actually in my case because I've painted so many wheels it makes it chops a giant amount of time off of a job and having it all set up and ready to go we're ready right now now I have a dedicated gun that always has silver in it, but I ran about a half a cup of acetone through it, so I'm not contaminating it with anything else that was in it. But these guns are so cheap, I just usually have one for each color. This is the silver gun. So this is our baseline test, the first one we're going to do. And now, again, I just noticed, I wanted to mention again, you see how much pigment has already fallen to the bottom? Well. It's, it's really important to shake this thoroughly, even when you think it's totally shaken up, and strain it before we put it in the gun. When you think it's shaken up, and the bottom is the same color as the paint, shake it an extra minute. Any metallic, especially silver and gold. And any time you have metallic, it's always good to strain it. Why is it ever good? All right, we only need about a half a gun for this, not even for this test. I'm putting all the spray footage in fast forward just to save some time. 
So to make the, the test fair, I'll go have a cup of coffee and put a second coat on this and see how it, that's going to look in the bright sun with two coats. And then of course we'll move on to the next segment, the next one. And we'll be able, by the end of the day, hopefully to compare these. But, and that's the color, that's the baseline color that we actually have on the R1 already. Okay, we got the second coat on. While that's drying, I'll change the paint in the gun and do test number one. Now, this is the test, and this one has the bronze powder in it. Now, any test like this just gets time consuming, but it really is too cold to even think about riding. I don't like to ride in the 20s. I've tried it already. A little bit too cold. Now, I just have to run some acetone through here, clean this gun, and put in the new paint. And we'll be ready for the next part of the test. And all of these segments got two separate coats. Now I repeat the whole thing with the gun cleaning, put in the pigment the, with the paste pigment, and get a test on that. And then we'll we'll try to get all four of them and let them with two coats each and let them dry thoroughly. Then we can take it out in the sun, but then we have to clear coat it. It's the clear coat that's gonna make the difference. So this is number two, and this has the paste pigment in it which I got to be very careful when I strain it. May have to add a little thinner to this in fact. See with the paste pigment why you really have to strain it? There's little, always little amounts of it that just don't homogenize. Don't forget this material is really old. It's probably 40 years old. And if you don't strain it, it spits out at the worst possible time and ruins your work. And the last one is going to be the, the silver with the big flake. And then we're going to have, uh, just let that dry, eh, half an hour, 45 minutes. And this will be our last test with the big flake. And, well, we certainly, I certainly can see the difference between the first three. This one I know I can because the flakes in this are so big. Anyway, we mixed all of these test samples up on yesterday's video. If that, if that is very interesting paint information on there, anybody interested. And these are the big silver flake mix. And being very careful to strain this material too. Now as the day is playing out, I'm finally getting to see this as the see the sun is not up all the way yet. But now we got enough sun I can take it out and look at it. Okay, so what did we learn? Here's the big flakes. Obviously the big flakes, very easy to see where the big flakes start and end. The R1 looks like the lightest of the silvers as we take it out in the sun. The R1 is the lightest. The big flake is the flakiest. I don't know. I don't like that. I'm not crazy about the big flakes. I think the R1 is the closest of what we have. and no, The other ones are pretty close. So I think the first thing we've done here is just eliminate the big flakes at this. Now, there's people I'm sure would like those big flakes, but I don't know. It doesn't, doesn't do it for me. All right, so this basically now this is going to dry about a half an hour. Then I'm going to mix up some clear, and we'll see what it looks like with the clear on it. But it totally changes from being in downstairs on fluorescent light to out in the sun. It's, it's an amazing transformation. And once that clear is on, it's going to be even more defined. Now one thing I've been doing real carefully is spraying plenty of acetone through the gun between tests and cleaning it out with paper towels to make sure we're not, I don't have an invalid test here because I want to use the same gun to mix up a batch of clear now. Once I eliminate one of these paints out of the mix, I'll tape this up, put it back in our tub that has all the silver paint for our future use. But we now are down to three. So I decided just to eliminate the big flakes and go with the one of these three. Now the way I'll figure it out, I'm going to mix up a batch of clear now, run it through the gun, and then go over all through. I'll go over even the, the, the one that, that has the big flakes with a coat, one coat of clear just to get a, an idea of which one of these I really like. And if they're, if they're really close, then it won't matter. But this one is a lot lighter out in the sun. The big flake was just a little too big for me. And these two look pretty much the same. So 
I've got a lot of choices here, but by fine-tuning this out at the end of this, I feel like I'll be a lot safer of painting a wheel. I don't want to paint it twice because these MT-09 wheels are going to have at least 100 hours of labor cleaning them up and polishing them and doing all the details and put a new tire on. And I don't want to compromise it by not spending this day doing a proper test. Now what I'm going to do is mix this up make a a four to, it's a four to one mix we've waited about a half an hour the parts are dry and this will give us a real good idea of which one of those three silvers we're going to use now I want to thank Joe Padula for donating this is the extra clear from his Ducati the repair we did last winter on his Ducati which came out pretty good he seemed pretty happy with it and if he's happy guess what I'm happy now I've been told by some people that really notice in working body shops never to stir these four to one mixes with a wooden stick. And some people say it doesn't matter at all, so I don't want to pass on any bad information. I use a carbon fiber rod, it's an arrow shaft. I don't want to take a chance. All right, we're going to be ready to do clear once I shake this up. So the bottom line here is the big sparkly stuff that just doesn't float my boat. The R1, still the brightest of the silvers, which is what I was trying to figure out anyway. So to me it has the look of, well, the look is the R1, the original R1 paint is the brightest I have available right now. So I think that obviously that's what we're going to go with. But I want to do one more test and it's just for me. I'm going to put some of the other pigment in the clear and paint the other side of the wheel just to see what it looks like when it's dried up. But that's just an experimental, a little experiment for me. Now this is just something I wanted to try for a long time when I had some clear left over, and I've obviously got plenty left over now. What I wanted to do is put some pigment in this clear. So to make really what I'll have at the end is silver four to one mix. We're gonna see how that works out. I've even talked to John Pothier about doing this, and he's done little touch-ups this way, and I've done little touch-ups, but I've never painted a part. So what, what this means is this will be a total experiment. We got a wheel to experiment on, which is always a good idea. I don't know how much of this will work. I'm going to shake it up, strain it, put it in a gun, and see if I can learn something. And of course, if I learn something, the idea of our channel, pass it on. So what this will be is 4 to 1 urethane, that's clear, and it'll have pigment in it. And I don't know that, maybe this is, this is not a practical way to do it, maybe it won't dry. Maybe it'll bubble up the surface underneath, I don't know, maybe we're going to find out. Now over the years I know, a lot of things I've tried haven't worked like I thought they would, but at least I got them out of my system and I've learned, well, move on to something else. This is something I've really wanted to try. And I'm not sure it'll work, but hey, by the end of the day, we'll know something we didn't know in the beginning of the day. And because this is the, uh, the paste, it's the paste pigment, I want to make sure I don't put any chunks. What happens, they wind up in a gun. That's the problem. Now, as I was spraying this, I was noticing right away, that it covers just like regular paint. And I don't know if when this is done, maybe a better thing is going to be to do this and then go clear in the gun and put a coat of clear on top but this covered better than I thought it would I wasn't sure it would cover this well over this primer and gray primer it'll cover even better now this is this is really <laughs> surprising me how good that worked now the advantage if I can do this the advantage is I would I would do the priming in gray primer too because the idea of painting a wheel is around the edge here, you don't want to get the paint thick. So when you mount a tire, the edge of the tire doesn't peel that up or put a chip in it. So if this dries and it's durable and well, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it to the test. What what this is gonna allow me to do if if I like this color as opposed to the or and it doesn't look that much different. In fact, it might even be a little brighter. I don't know why. But I'm gonna put a second coat on this and what that'll mean is I only have two coats of paint instead of four. The paint will be thinner, and the thin paint will be an advantage of chipping, because the thicker you make paint, 
the more prone it is to chipping or to when you're mounting a tire especially if you do it with tools uh, and rim protectors and well or if you either way you got to put some stress on that paint around the edge in the middle nothing bad happens but that would be a giant advantage if this works now the way i'll know if it works if it dries up overnight and it's really solid to the touch and no reason it shouldn't be but boy that will that will really be something we can put in the bank right there so you try four or five things only one works but that one can can be a real game changer and we're going to find out and the only way you know you're going to learn something if you try it and you're willing to fail now i won't really know much till tomorrow till this dries up but it looks like i might have learned something we're going to find out by tomorrow and the ability to keep the paint thin on the edge of the wheel rim boy is that gonna that's going to be really nice now i see a couple spots on here there's a problem i didn't sand the wheel of course and there's paint underneath this wheel and who knows what so this this is not a real test of, of what i want to do but it, it certainly is it's an interesting thing to me how this played out this really I think I learned something. Anyway, next couple days, we're gonna see how it dries up, and then we'll make a final plan for painting that MT-09 wheel, so. So I really feel like I made some progress today by taking a chance. Looks like I might have uncovered a, a way to keep the wheel paint thinner. That looks like that's drying up at the normal time and place and everything. And because we had a sunny day, I wanted to get some idea about the color combination and this is with the the paste and clear and what i did i painted the whole wheel just to see if anything was going to interact with anything and so far so good and i shot a bunch of pictures because i was really excited about i wanted to share this color combination with karen of course and she loves the blue and the silver now i really do like the blue and the silver when it's when they are out in the sun and I feel like I really learned something today, but I'm really skeptical and I'm going to do more testing before I actually paint the wheels. I want to do something now that I know that urethane I, is, is, you can mix it. I want to see one other thing, if I can do this without using primer at all, because the urethane really sticks a lot better than the paint. It'd be an interesting thing, and I got all those wheels to play with. And what has always happened to me is I've experimented with something, especially with paint or with carbon fiber. Well, one idea I've had, when, I, when I've uh, carried it through, it leads to another idea that I didn't originally have, and another idea. Now, the idea of eliminating the primer is a major thing, too. That'll thin the paint out even more and make that rim edge even thinner. And the urethane paint, of course, is pretty bulletproof. Well, I just try to, in my mind, I'm still looking at how I like this combination of the silver wheels and that very, I think it's a very nice colored blue that Yamaha Racing Blue. And it'll be interesting once they're painted to put the R1 and the MT-09 side by side. <laughs> I'll have something that a really valid comparison. This, now I'm convinced that color silver, that color blue, and I can move forward. But I really, the, I'm still not at the point where I had 100% trust that that's going to dry up it's got to dry 24 hours and that i'm going to have some other issue there but if even if i do i'm going to work on it but i thought what would be a really good issue is i can take i don't even need to take another wheel i could take one of these wheels grind it down a bare metal in one spot and just do this test over to see if if i can eliminate the primer because the whole thing with a wheel if you can make the paint thin enough wow you ahead of the, any problem i've ever had with paint it's right when it gets real thick around the edge. And I've gotten better over the years, but that is the critical thing, not to build up. Now, when I put that stripe around the, the wheel, it makes it even worse because you have to bury it and clear. But this, we may have learned something today, that the game changer, I don't know. But it so today's experiments look like they all went pretty well. I was really, really impressed with how that urethane with the pigment in it worked out. And maybe it's not an invention at all. Maybe there's going to be some downside to it. I don't know, but because we were, uh, we're willing to do these tests and we're certainly willing to fail and that the biggest thing anytime you paint something, if you're not happy with it, you can always grab that gallon of acetone and just take it right off or paint remover or sand it or grind it or in some terrible case, paint right over it. Paint is not something that, it's not like cutting a frame in half 
and you don't have a welding torch. So I have enjoyed painting my whole life, gotten a lot of satisfaction out of the things I've done for myself and for my friends. And I try to post up on YouTube almost every day the things I've learned, the things I still have yet to learn and I'm experimenting with. And I'm really hoping that you've enjoyed sharing this with me. So if you enjoyed the video, I hope you share it with your friends. And of course, I hope most of all that we'll see you tomorrow. And thanks again for watching.